Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, thank God it's a Red Friday. So, (laughs) last night going into that Thursday night game, I would have thought, or maybe hopefully I wasn't alone in that it was going to be a little bit closer of a game. But, man, right out of the get-go, the Dolphins just kept shooting themselves in the foot. When you take a look at the numbers, and this is how misleading these stats can be, uh, Miami had everything going for them. My gosh, they... They run or pass. They should. I'm sorry. They rushed for 351 yards in that game, and Buffalo only had 247. Not that that's a paltry figure, but still 351 on the ground. Now Buffalo did outpass Miami, uh, 139 for Miami and uh, 112 for Buffalo. Or 212, I should say, for Buffalo. But the big category, and you just mentioned it, shooting themselves in the foot. Three interceptions. Tua threw three picks for 62 yards, and that took Miami right out of the scoring position every single time. 31 to 10 the final, Buffalo wins it over the Dolphins, and Buffalo has a hex on Miami. I think they've won of the last 13 games. Buffalo's won 11 of them, but they just simply out-defensed the Miami Dolphins who made mistake after mistake after mistake. Tua was knocked out of the game in the third period with a concussion, how serious that is one of their concussions, so he has to go through the protocol, but that was not a very good performance by the Miami Dolphins at all, and they're now 1-1 one and one on the year. Buffalo 31, Miami 10 is the final. I don't know what to think, too. I mean, you look at how many rushing yards they had, and you think, oh man, their front, their front five's doing their job, but then you look at how terrorized Tua was last night, and he was. I mean, Buffalo was all over him. I, I it's, it's mind-boggling, but definitely surprised me. Something else well, that surprised. I'll tell you what that is, Mike. When you put the pressure on a quarterback like that, and have him, having him perform what's called happy feet. That never is a good sign. When that guy doesn't have the confidence to get it done, your attack is going to be completely compromised. And we all saw it last night. Anyway, a in a time when a lot of conferences are shuttering up and folding in, we got one that's like, nah, man, we're not done yet. The, P- <laughs> the Pac-12 says, not so not fast. Not just yet. <laughs> or at least give us more money. What they're going to do is add another two Pac-12 remaining teams from the original ones, Washington State and Oregon State. And they're going to form their own Pac-12 conference. They invited four teams from the Mountain West to join them. Boise State is a very good program. San Diego State, an old, long-time program. Colorado State, Fresno State. They are all joining Washington State, Oregon State in a new Pac-12, which is good. The difference is that the NCAA does not recognize a conference unless it has eight teams in it. And this one only has six. They've got to add two more in time for the 2026 season. That's when this will go into effect and allows contracts that have been signed to expire. So we'll see what happens. But the Pac-12 may be back. It won't be the, quite the same as the Pac-12 that we remember with UCLA and Southern Cal and California and Stanford and those people but and Washington. But the fact of the matter remains they are going to try to remain afloat with these new teams and just see what happens and get some NCAA recognition. Got some uh, heated competition in the NASCAR playoffs right now. Where's the race number three in that series? This is three out of ten. There are ten playoff races. Now, everybody drives. I I think that's a misconception among a lot of uh, novice racing fans. All the drivers are involved. But at this point, there are only 12 who are eligible for the points championship, which is decided in early November out in Phoenix. This is race number three. It's on the road course, one of the world-renowned road courses at Watkins Glen in the Mirror Lakes area of upstate New York. Beautiful countryside, it really is. But Watkins Glen, very famous. That's where they run this one. This is NASCAR, folks, but it's a road race. The current points leader is Ryan Blaney. Christopher Bell is second. Tyler Reddick is third. The defending champion from last year is Kyle Larson. He is in the hunt. He is in 10th place. Big race coming up, Watkins Glen. It is a very tricky course to run. Uh, very much in the sport light, we've got one team in Missouri trying to get that spot, and the other one's not looking so good. Where are we at with both teams? Well, we'll talk about the Kansas City Royals first. They did not play last night. They're on the road and play in Pittsburgh this weekend. Very big series for Kansas City, which still harbors hopes of overhauling Cleveland, but there, those hopes are vanishing pretty quickly. 
Royals trail by four games, and there are about 15 remaining. Okay, the wild card very much in the Royals' strong point right now. They can play in the wild card berth. I think they're going to get that, too. So Kansas City plays the Pirates this weekend. The Cardinals beat the Cincinnati Reds yesterday 6-1. to Cincinnati is just not very good at all. And I don't think the Cardinals are either. But the fact is that the Cardinals came away with a win, 6-1. to But then they look at the game last night out at Oracle Park in San Francisco. Come on, Giants. No. The Brewers won 3-0. So the Cardinals remain 10 games out with 16 to play. And think about that, Mike. 10 games remaining, 16 to play. Now that's to overhaul first place. That's highly, 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 not impossible, but highly unlikely. And the wild card is highly unlikely for the Cardinals. Six games out of a wild card berth with 16 games remaining and two teams in front of them. They all have to lose. That ain't going to happen. There is no wild card coming out of the uh, NL Central. (laughs) No, it it certainly does not look good. Now, the uh, Springfield Cardinals played last night, played the San Antonio Missions. 4-1 to with final. San Antonio got the win over Springfield. Folks, it means nothing. The Springfield Cardinals are in the playoffs. They begin next Tuesday in Little Rock, Arkansas. One game there, a day off. And then next Thursday is the Cardinals' home game. One, maybe two. We'll find out. It's Thursday and Friday. They get home field advantage. Both of the playoff series in the Texas League are best of three. Best of three. So they're very abbreviated. But Springfield's a pretty good team, folks. And they think they can do a lot of damage. And I know tonight what I'll be doing, watching my K-State Wildcats battle Arizona and Manhattan. That kicks off a really good weekend of college football. It is indeed. And some great college games coming up here in town. We have the Bears. Their home opener is with Lindenwood. Not very many folks are acquainted with Lindenwood. It's in St. Charles, Missouri, but it's Division I, folks, and they're in the Ohio Valley Conference. Tell you how much of a push they're making at Lindenwood to be a big-time college. Their hockey team plays NCAA college hockey at the top level. That means you're playing Notre Dame and the schools back east and Minnesota Duluth and teams like that. Hey, they're, they're pretty good competition. Anyway, Lindenwood's football team is here for a 6 o'clock game tomorrow night. That is the home opener. I hope everybody gets out to see the Bears. The Bears are a good team, folks. I know they're 0-2, but they played Montana and Ball State, and that's been pretty good competition. The Bears have been in every game. Late tomorrow morning, Missouri plays Boston College when that game was first on the schedule. I thought, well, this is this is a piece of cake because Boston College has, over the past couple of years, not been a contender at all in the Atlantic Coast Conference. That's Duke and North Carolina and Miami and people like that. They've been blasted. Not so fast. They are now 2-0. and They've won both their games. One was over Florida State. This will be a nice little challenge, but Missouri is a 16-point favorite. The one that I'm particularly focused on, Alabama. You have to understand Alabama football. Great tradition, Nick Saban and this national championships and all that. Alabama very rarely, almost to the point of saying never, plays above the Mason-Dixon line. They don't go north at all. They play all their games in the south, except Saturday. They're going to Madison, Wisconsin, playing the Wisconsin Badgers, Alabama, Wisconsin. Looks like it should be a great game, but Bama is a 16-point favorite. Georgia, Kentucky. Georgia's number one in America. They're playing the Kentucky Wildcats in Lexington. Texas A&M in Florida. Big game for the Florida Gators and their coach. He is on. It's not a hot seat. It is a searing seat that he's on. He could get canned. This early in the season? uh, This early. They, They have not improved at all. And Arkansas down in Fayetteville going to play Alabama-Birmingham. Pretty good program there. Oklahoma hosting Tulane. Doesn't look like much of a matchup. It is. Tulane is a very good football team, and many of them going on all across the country. Last but not least, our Kansas City Chiefs get back-to-back home games, so they're back at Arrowhead this Sunday, taking on the Bengals. Are they favored by a lot in this no, game? It's, no, they aren't. Kansas City is favored over the Bengals by about six, but that's an awful lot of points to give up in the National Football League. Nonetheless, Kansas City, in my opinion, is better than Cincinnati. The Bengals did not look good in their home opener. They looked very rusty. They didn't win it. They got upset by the Patriots, and the Patriots aren't very good at all. But 
This is Pro Football, Mike, and you know as well as anyone, having followed the game all these years and followed the Chiefs all these years, that there's a lot of parity. These are professional athletes, and anything can happen. So it's the Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals, and they play at 3.30 on Sunday afternoon here on 104.7 The Cave. Ned Talk, that's the Ozarks pregame show begins at 1. We're live at 1, right right here in this studio. At 2 o'clock, it's the Chiefs pregame show. We join that. And uh, the that's an hour-long show as well. And then the football game itself. It'll be, I think, a pretty good ball game. I look for Cincinnati to play a lot better football, but I don't look for them to win. Hopefully we can hold down the fort and go into week three with two wins. Ned, you have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday.